By now, fake martial arts masters getting destroyed by real fighters is a globally followed phenomena heavily influenced and inspired by such events as Xu Xiaodong beating a Tai Chi master and continuing to do the same with other martial artists who claim to be masters of fighting. But the question still remains, why do these masters believe that they would win? And do they really believe in that to begin with? To find out the answer, in this video we will take a look at 8 different fake martial arts masters getting destroyed by real fighters and afterward dig into a scientific explanation of why these situations happen again and again and what really is happening behind them. So let's start with example number 8, Tai Chi vs MMA, 5 second KO. Many of us know Tai Chi as a gentle exercise senior people do in the park, but it turns out that some Tai Chi masters also claim that it's supposed to be an effective martial art for fighting. Yet what really happens when such a master fights a fighter? In this video, a Tai Chi master goes up against an MMA fighter and in 5 seconds, the fight is over. Number 7, One Arm Boxer vs Ding Chen Master. In this video, we see a boxer who before the fight injured one of his hands, but he was willing to fight using only one arm nonetheless, most likely expecting that there was not much of a real danger facing a Kung Fu master. Meanwhile, his opponent is a third generation Yip Man Ding Chun master. At the beginning, the Ding Chun master stands in a traditional stance, trying out some kicks and strikes, but seeing that his attacks don't make much impact, he becomes jumpy. Meanwhile, the boxer uses some nice footwork and head movement to both advance and defend himself. As the fight progresses, the Ving Chun master seems to become more and more desperate, and as a result, starts throwing wild punches, far from how Ving Chun's strikes are supposed to look. Eventually, he gets dropped by a strike to the chest, after which he takes almost a minute lasting break to recover. Once the fight starts again, the Ving Chun master becomes even jumpier, desperately leaning back and forth to avoid getting punched while completely losing his stance and posture. The fight continues to go on like this until the round ends, and while from this video we don't know the official winner, it is pretty clear who had the upper hand. Number 6. Ving Chun Hobbyist Challenges Mike Tyson this Ving Chun practitioner, in a video he posted himself, challenges Mike Tyson, saying that he could beat him in free moves. While he does not get to face Tyson, a local MMA fighter decides to take up his challenge. Similar to other cases, the Ving Chun fighter starts off in a traditional stance, which unfortunately doesn't keep the hands high enough to defend the face. As a result, he gets punched in the head, then starts leaning back, throwing wild shots and eventually grabs onto the MMA fighter out of desperation. On one hand, it's almost shocking and surprising how these masters think that they're invincible until they actually get to fight, almost begging the question, do they really believe that they're invincible? Unfortunately, the answer is yes, and I will explain why that is so later in this video. But until we dig into the explanation, let's take a look at a few more examples. Number 5. Tai Chi Fighter Fights an MMA Fighter This video is surprisingly similar to the first one we took a look at, but while it is a different one, it only continues to show how universal these outcomes are. In this video, the Tai Chi Master starts off with his hands completely down, by far not a great fighting approach, yet he most likely expects to use his extremely fast reaction skills to unexpectedly defend and knock out the MMA Fighter. Unfortunately, while the Tai Chi Master does try out some moves, it doesn't work and he ends up getting knocked down. Then, following a lengthy break, the Tai Chi master tries to go at it again, starting off with a kick and then attempting some grappling for a clinch. But after that doesn't work, soon enough, he gets knocked out cold. Number 4. No Touch Master Challenges MMA Fighter In this video, a Russian-speaking No Touch martial arts master tries to prove to a fighter that he can block his strikes and win against him while using some sort of an energetic field. During the first attempt, the fighter politely strikes and stops just in front of the No Touch Master's face, pulling his strike back. But the master abuses this opportunity and following the pullback strike, slaps the fighter a couple of times. The No Touch Master then smirks, believing that he has proved his superior technique. But the fighter seems to get mad and decides to go at it again, this time not pulling his punches while barely giving a chance for the master to prepare. The master then fails to defend, but decides to give another shot. This time, he gets plenty of time to prepare, but gets punched a number of times again, finally admitting that he was beaten. Number 3. Tai Chi vs Wrestling Match 
You may have seen some videos of Tai Chi masters effortlessly throwing their students around. One could then expect that in a wrestling match, a Tai Chi master should be able to show the same results. Unfortunately, in a real case scenario that happened at the gym of the famous Xu Dong, while the Tai Chi master wearing all black manages to show some basic sprawling skills, despite being bigger than his opponent, something that gives him a strong advantage, doesn't manage to perform even a single takedown, eventually burning himself out, stopping the match and starting to make excuses blaming the rules for being rigged against him. Number 2. Ving Chen Hobbyist Challenges Professional MMA Fighter While this Ving Chen fighter does not claim to be a master, it is another great example of how delusional martial artists can get, as the Ving Chen practitioner makes a public announcement that he wants to challenge a professional MMA fighter to a fight. In the following video, he finds a fighter who accepts his challenge, but the fight lasts only a few seconds as he gets knocked out cold. Number 1. Smaller Fighter vs Ving Chun In this video, a bigger Ving Chun fighter tries to display some Ving Chun skills in the ring. Yet while he does demonstrate some Ving Chun concepts, such as going for a series of strikes while moving forward and makes an attempt at trapping his opponent's hands, he eventually fails to defend his head properly and finally gets knocked out by his opponent's kick to the head. Now to answer the big question, why do these masters believe that they are invincible and do they really believe that to begin with? Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, the answer is yes and luckily there is a psychological explanation to it. This phenomenon is known as the Dunning-Kruger effect and was examined and explained by two sociologists, David Dunning and Justin Kruger, hence the name. Dunning and Kruger first became interested in this phenomena when they learned about MacArthur Wheeler, a bank robber who was caught after trying to rob a bank while having his face covered with lemon juice, believing that he would become invisible the same way lemon juice creates quote-unquote invisible ink. MacArthur was deemed sane, just not very intelligent. But while an extreme example, this event made Dunning and Kruger become interested and to investigate further why some people tend to overestimate things and come to the wrong conclusions. To reveal the effects of the phenomenon in the lab, Dunning and Kruger designed some clever experiments. In one study, they asked undergraduate students a series of questions about grammar and logic and then asked each student to estimate his or her score overall. Interestingly, students who scored the lowest in these cognitive tasks always overestimated how well they did by a lot. In another experiment, Dunning and Kruger asked their 65 participants to rate how funny different jokes were. Some of the participants were exceptionally poor at determining what other people would find funny. Yet, these same subjects describe themselves as excellent judges of humor. And here's where martial arts come in, where the main difference between the fake martial arts masters and the real fighters who beat them was not necessarily the time they spent training. I have no doubt that some of the masters trained devotedly for decades, potentially even longer than some of their opponent fighters. But the big difference was that the fighters actually fought, while the masters didn't. All the masters really did was practice choreographed moves without any real resistance. Meanwhile, they would think or even be told by their instructors how great these moves would work in a real fight, imagining how they successfully apply these moves against real fighters. But in reality, these masters had no experience whatsoever in fighting, making them poor judges of what would really work. Another way to look at this is to take a look at the Dunning-Kruger effect graph, where at the beginning of learning martial arts, these future masters raise themselves to extreme levels of confidence because they learn some new skills but don't really know what fighting is really about. Unfortunately, their knowledge of what real fighting is about never continues to really grow and they end up staying at what Dunning and Kruger call the peak of Mount Stupid. Only when these fake masters eventually get exposed to their limitations do they realize how little they really know and as a result fall to the valley of despair. Then put in hard work, start to learn real fighting and eventually reach the plane of sustainability. Or as unfortunately in most cases, they deny their loss, make up excuses, fail to admit their shortcomings and stay planted forever in their fantasies, spending the rest of their time at peak of Mount Stupid. If you're interested in fake masters, then check out this video where I exposed an entire organization of fake martial arts masters. Thank you for watching this video and as always, I wish you to own your journey.